Knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion? I would have, and so, so would have Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I don't know what that decision would have been. That's a hypothetical, but the simple fact is mistakes were made. If we're all supposed to answer hypothetical questions, knowing what we know now, what would you have done? I would have not engaged. I would not have gone into Iraq. Well, Jeb Bush is rocky weak as he struggled to answer a question about invading Iraq back in 2003. And it's time now for our Sunday group. Fox News senior political analyst, Britt Hume. USA Today columnist Kirsten Powers, who's written a new book called The Silencing, How the Left is Killing Free Speech. GOP strategist Carl Rove and Fox News political analyst Juan Williams. Carl, what did we learn this week about Jeb Bush as a presidential candidate? And since you used to be in this business with his brother, how would you advise him to deal with all the questions he's going to get about what his brother did as president. Yeah, well look, first of all, it's his turn in the barrel. I mean, you, you quoted the Sean Hannity interview on Tuesday. W two seconds later, after the end of that clip that you had, he was asked, would you make a different decision than your brother did? And he said, yes. But this is a question in which there's only one acceptable answer from the perspective of the media, which is to say, and it took him until Thursday to say it, knowing what we know today, I would not have gone in. So I think there are two lessons from this, and he's a smart guy, and he's going to learn those two lessons. One is, say with clarity what you, uh, what you believe, and if you make a mistake, clean it up quicker rather than later. But everybody's going to have their turn in the barrel on this question. Juan, uh, what did this week tell you ab about Bush, and particularly getting to Carl's issue, about his nimbleness as a candidate and how much of a burden the Bush, quote, baggage is going to be for him? He's got to get in shape. He's not nimble at all right now. It's a little bit of a surprise to me, and I think, you know, it makes me wonder about staffing. I mean, obviously he comes from such a wonderful family, great presidential background, and yet, and with all the money in the world, and yet he wasn't ready to handle the question. So nimbleness is not the issue. I mean, to me, the problem is he engaged in a dodge, an evasive response that's almost reflexive among Republicans, which is, oh, Hillary would have done the same thing. Democrats would have done the same thing based on that same information. But the fact is that we know, and that was the question from Megyn Kelly, now that there were no weapons of mass destruction. So he, instead of just saying no, which is what he should have said, because this is a very unpopular war in the polls with Republicans and Democrats, he couldn't bring himself to say, no, I wouldn't have done it. Instead, he gets into this thing with Democrats would have done the same thing. It was a huge mistake. Uh, I think it revived the Bush baggage that you're talking about. Uh, he didn't answer it twice. He didn't answer it with Megan or Sean Hannity. He then gets into a fight with a student out in, uh, I think it was uh, Nevada, about this question. It was a problem. It's 500 days out, so he has some time to recover. But, you know, it just makes you think this guy is, you know, he's tied in the polls. He should be ahead. Uh, look, the problem was not that he, the, the initial answer, or it should not have been. He clearly misunderstood the question, and when he said Hillary would have done the same thing, what he was speaking about was her vote to authorize that war. But it was not the, that was a responsive not to the question he got. Now, immediately after that, he or someone on his team should have said, you answered the wrong question. You need to fix this. He didn't do that. And it took him, what, three tries before he finally got it right. That's the kind of thing that you can't afford in a presidential campaign. He had an answer ready, but he didn't get the question he expected, so he needed to recover from that. It took him much too long to recover from that, so that's the problem, it, and, and he's going to have to be sharper in the future. All right. There was another big political story this week, and I want to ask you about it, Brett, and that is the revelation that our colleague George Stephanopoulos of ABC News had over the years contributed $75,000 to the Clinton Foundation and that he didn't disclose that fact even when he was covering the current controversy about the, the foundation. On Friday, he apologized. I should have gone the extra mile to avoid even the appearance of a conflict. I apologize to all of you for failing to do that. Britt, you were the former boss here, the managing editor in the Washington Bureau. Uh, what do you think of what he did, and how would you have reacted as a boss if somebody here in the bureau did that. Well, I also covered uh, the Clinton White House when he was press secretary, and it was pretty clear to me when he came out of that job, went to work for ABC, you know, look, well, the business we're in is not a priesthood. 
um, it's perfectly possible for somebody to make the, make the transition from politics to journalism. But if there's one thing he needed to do in doing that was to sever any real or apparent ties with the Clintons. Contributing to their foundation is one thing. It now also turns out that he participated in panels and other events connected to the Clinton Global Initiative. It, it, it is a mistake to do that. You want to be seen as independent, and if there's anybody in the world that you want to seem independent from, it's the Clintons. So that's the mistake. The apology is fine. I give him credit for making it. I like George. I think, by and large, he's done a good job of being even-handed in his work. But this was a, this was a mistake, and I'm not sure. And I'm not sure it's going to. He'll recover from it anytime soon. How do you feel about the failure to disclose to the viewers? Well, that's a, that's a similar mistake. You full dis, you, you know, think of all the times when, say, Nina Easton, whose husband is a political consultant. Uh, has been on these panels here at Fox News. Particularly when, if, he, when he was involved in the Romney campaign. Right, and she would always say, full disclosure, my husband works for the Romney campaign. That gives the, the viewers a chance to sift what she's heard. That's the way to handle it. He didn't do that. Kirsten, are you troubled by the Stephanopoulos story? And is his decision to recuse himself from the Republican debate that ABC is going to have next year, is that enough? Well, it's not even clear that he was going to be doing the debate in the first place, so I'm not sure that he's recusing himself from anything. I think what's happened here is that I, I know Republicans really think the Clinton Foundation is this nefarious political operation, but the rest of us sort of see it as a humanitarian organization that's doing good work. And I think that that's probably what he was, was giving money to, uh, not to a political campaign. And uh, and perhaps that's why he wasn't didn't think he should disclose it, though I, I don't entirely get that. The other thing the Clinton campaign is making a point of is lots of journalists did this. Many journalists gave money to it. But to Britt's point, he's they not. He's lots not, of journalists gave money. Uh, a lot of different high-profile people had given I, money I to like the that foundation. List. Yeah. Well, they have they have a, a list that should, and and also a lot of them were involved in giving. Uh, well, well, panels any of them covering and the Clintons in any way? Any of them covering the Clintons? Right. But here's here's a, here's my point. He's different anyway. Even if even if that's true, to your point, he had he worked he was the press secretary in the Clinton administration. He has a, he's going to have to hold himself to a d different standard. He can't, and it needs to be disclosed. And then the added step is the way he treated the Clinton cash, a, you know, journalist who did this book. That if had he not done that, this probably wouldn't be as bad. But the fact that he was so really aggressive in that interview, I don't think he should have done the interview in the first place. He should have recused himself. Carl, last word. Look, I like George, too, but this was a huge mistake. Uh, he, it was a half-hearted apology. I, I want to go the extra mile. Well, I don't think he went an inch, let alone a mile, to begin with. I mean, he didn't, the, 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 he did nothing to, to, to make his conflict known. Uh, secondly, um, he said, I'm, I, wanted, I did this because I wanted to help children, fight AIDS, and help the environment. Well, look, give money to Bono's organization if you want to fight AIDS. You know, give money to save the children. Pick one of a dozen different environmental right, I'm groups. Gonna just, uh, one quick thing, because we're really running out of time here. I've taken some criticism this week because we have you on the show in 2014, and you were talking about Senate races, and you're involved in Senate races. And, and, I, and I made, I made those—I uh, I would talk about that. In fact, full disclosure, I've contributed to the Bush Presidential Library. There's no foundation engaged in supporting his lifestyle, but I've given to the Bush Presidential Library. But I'm not a journalist. I'm, 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 a, I'm a pundit. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a commentator. I'm somebody with an opinion. George— hey, girl, George, pundits are journalists, too. <laughs> well, exactly. You write a column, right? right? Exactly. You're, you're but, a newspaper columnist. But, no, but, but nobody—but I'm not trying to make the transition that, that George did. Like before him, Tim Russert. Tim Russert did a magnificent job of moving from a Democrat operative into a bipartisan, nonpartisan host of a Sunday morning talk program. And George was doing the same. And this has tarnished what he has done I'm for 16 years. I'm just very uncomfortable with all this movement. You know, the Al Sharpton becomes a, a host. I just think, you know, journalism, I disagree with well, there there Journalism should, they should let journalists be the journalist. Those people aren't trained as broadcasters. And yet they're over there. Stephanopoulos was the press secretary. How can you say he's separate from the Clintons? That's crazy. Well, I'm glad we settled that. All right, we have to take a break.